All right, are you guys ready to get into the Word of God today? Awesome, I hope you're hungry. We've been in a series on the Holy Spirit, and you might be saying, okay, why Holy Spirit, why now? Well, we are a Pentecostal church, we are Assemblies of God, and we just believe that there should be continued learning when it comes to the Holy Spirit, a steady diet to kind of bring us in. And I said last week that we don't need churches full of people, although it's fun to see the seats full, uh, that is great, but God wants, and I believe the world needs people, that's us, full or consumed with the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? And that idea has captured my thoughts in, in this season, and it's so important that we are the ones that take the Spirit with us, that we are infilled, and then we go. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the idea of living life in the Spirit. And to, in order to get there, I, I want to remind us that we've been answering the question that Jesus asked so many people in the Gospels. He said this, he said, what do you want me to do for you? And I was thinking, if Jesus said, what do you want to do, or what can I do for you, I mean, the sky is the limit. If you came to me and said, hey, Ben Vey, you know, if I said, hey, what can I do for you, how many know I've got limited resources, except I do have a little extra in my back pocket from that Pentecostal handshake, but, but you know, I, there's a cap to what I can do for you, Right. If Elon Musk was here, wouldn't that be great? And then if he asked you that question, hey, w Daniel, what could I do for you? If I mean, you know I'm not asking for that Pentecostal handshake. I'm asking for a new Tesla or something. I don't know, uh, something more, right, the, the sky. But Jesus is the one that asked, and I was thinking, wow, you know, we get to wrestle with that, and we've been wrestling. It really it comes down to what is our greatest need? What is the desire of our hearts in it is hard to answer those types of questions. It takes time, and we've been wrestling with it in our uh, iParent class on Wednesday night, and I would love to have you join us. Uh, our group is growing, and we will keep on adding chairs every week if we need to, and it will be awesome. But I believe that to answer that question, what's our greatest need, what's our greatest desire, the answer can and should be the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the answer. The Holy Spirit makes us better than we are on our own. He is the multiplier. And we need to learn about the Holy Spirit. And in order to do that, we created these, uh, these bookmarks for you to take home. And over the last couple of weeks, we still have those at the Connection Center. So if you're new with us today or you weren't around the last couple of weeks, uh, we would love for you to get one of these. And just take some time. Sit down with your Bible. Open it up. Read these verses underline them, make some notes, and uh, do some study around these things, and your knowledge of the Holy Spirit will grow, and it will make a difference. In that process, I just want you to know that there are different characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Last week, we talked about different symbols that, of the Holy Spirit. We talked about wind and water and fire, how those relate to the Holy Spirit. With wind, we, you can't see the wind, but how many know you can feel it, right? And the same is true with the Holy Spirit, the wind of the Spirit, or the breath of God, right? And it's powerful. Uh, the wind can change, and it can move these huge turbine uh, windmills up north, and maybe you've seen those. It's incredible. Or there's this force of a tornado that can sweep through a town, and the wind can be crazy powerful, and the same is true with the Holy Spirit. When I think of water, I think about life, and I think of the ocean, right? And there's a refreshing aspect when it comes to water. And that's what the Holy Spirit does as well. It brings life. It brings joy. It nourishes. And what does water do to a dry land? It prepares. It softens the hard places. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. It softens our hearts so we can receive everything from the Lord, and creates flows, uh, uh, streams that flow from within us. Isn't that awesome what the Holy Spirit does? And then when you think about the fire, there's nothing like fire. And it fire penetrates, fire uh, purifies, it illuminates, it reveals. The Holy Spirit does all those things. It, the Holy Spirit dispels darkness, spreads and touches others. Like there should be an effect if we're full of the Holy Spirit, and it burns up the superfluous. Yes, I used that word last week too. It's the most difficult word in my message today. And so anyway, but we, the Lord has been stirring in us that we've got to be full of the Holy Spirit. 
and to understand what this means. And, uh, and we've, as we were praying and looking at uh, through Missions Convention, where there's a tie between Holy Spirit and missions, uh, the Holy Spirit is what compels us to be missions-minded. Uh, and then we've decided to extend our Holy Spirit series through the month of November. And when we get to November, we'll talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, the fruit of the Spirit, and some other things. And again, we want to learn, but we also want to experience the Holy Spirit. And so we are headed into an incredible season. And uh, we don't want you to miss an, a week. And so make it a priority to be here. And the key around all of this, what we've been saying, is to have a heightened awareness of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We've got to have a heightened awareness that we are understanding. And in order to do that and to facilitate that and to kind of pour some fire, so to speak, on that awareness, is we are calling a 21-day fast starting November 1st. And we are praying. You say, well, what's the focus of the fast? We are praying for repentance and for revival. And uh, we're, that by the end of the year, we're going to see a, a harvest of souls in your family and my family and our neighbors and our coworkers coming to Jesus, repentance and a purification in this season. And so would you join us, be planning for that 21 days starting November 1st. And I understand that that takes some uh, planning for, for some. And uh, you can do a variety of different type of fasts with us. Uh, I think we'll be doing a 21-day Daniel fast. And so if you do that with us, you know, you're definitely going to need to uh, shop a little bit different. No Twinkies or Ho-Hos. And uh, for, uh, not, we don't buy those anyway, but anyway, so praise the Lord. All right. You guys want to know what we're going to talk about today? <laughs> I already said the Holy Spirit, heightened awareness of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Today's message is a little different. It's not for those outside of the faith. Uh, and I, I just want to let you know, if you're here and you are coming to the Lord or maybe the Lord's drawing you and you've not made a decision for the Lord, the Holy Spirit is the one that's drawing. But today's message is for those of us that have already accepted Jesus as our personal Savior. It's for believers. Uh, and you say, well, what is that? Or like, how does that work? Well, John 14, 16, and 17 says this. Uh, this is Jesus talking. He says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. That's the Holy Spirit to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. And then look what it says, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. I want to pause there for a second. The idea of what we're going to talk about today, for those outside of the faith, those that haven't ex received Christ, they see what we're going to talk about as foolishness, as uh, they, they don't understand it. There's, they have blinders on that the world, uh, they can't see, they can't know the Holy Spirit uh, and, until they make a decision to follow Christ and then they receive the Holy Spirit. But then look what it says, but you know him. He's talking to the followers of Christ. For he dwells with you and will be in you. He will be in you is the distinction that we want to talk about. The Spirit is with you, but then he is also in you. Again, people who are not following Jesus, they can't understand. They say, all right, you're talking about the Holy Spirit. That's a little spooky. Maybe if you go old school, you say the Holy Ghost. How many remember growing up hearing about the Holy Ghost, right? And, uh, and, and some are saying, okay, it's Holy Ghost. It's October. Maybe we're just, it's a Halloween series. I don't know. Well, I can assure you it's not a Halloween series. This series, to those that are believers, and today in particular, uh, I believe that the Lord will speak and move in a powerful way. The idea is that Jesus was with his disciples, right? And you say, well, all right, Jesus and me, or with me, that's pretty awesome. Even the Holy Spirit with me, yes, please, right? All right, I want more of that. But then the question is, well, how could it get better? Well, Jesus answers that because the Holy Spirit is not only with us, but inside of us. John 16, 7, Jesus says it was better for him to go away. And the reason it was better is he said it was to, his, to the disciples' advantage in verse uh, 7. 
It says, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He sent his Holy Spirit to improve, to be with us, inside of us. And you think about it. The Holy Spirit residing inside of us is greater than having Jesus in the flesh right next to us. Human uh, interaction with Jesus it would be at a lesser value than the Holy Spirit inside of us. And I understand, for some of us, you don't believe that. But I want to encourage you to be thinking that way, that the Holy Spirit inside of us is incredible. And so believers, and even future believers that the Holy Spirit's drawing, God is calling us to live a life in the Spirit. Life in the Spirit. And when I think about life in the Spirit, it's not some glossed over, cupcake filled, uh, you know, always, you know, ponies and dancing. Uh, it's, it, it's real life. It's raw. And none of us hit 100%. But life in the Spirit makes all the difference. How many know someone, a believer, that knows Jesus and they've tried everything? But they can't get over complaining over everything or comparing their story to someone else's. Or they can't get the sense that they keep, just keep on overspending or their, their life is full of worry. That's not life in the Spirit. Or they have an addiction that just keeps on hanging on. Maybe it was something uh, in their adult life that, that, the, that it got a grip and never, got, never has been able to overcome. Or maybe life in the Spirit, this is not life in the Spirit, but just full of social media and just always there. Or those that get caught up in gaming or gambling or drinking or smoking. You can put in your favorite uh, uh, disparity. But you feel defeated. You feel underwhelmed, right? Or overwhelmed. And then you feel underfulfilled. And you're just, you're thinking, man, this, you know, is this everything that there is? Well, no. There's life in the Spirit. And what's interesting is that the Bible speaks to it in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that there's no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted about all those things, your addictions or your worry or your comparing or your, your, uh, your trouble with whatever the trouble is. He says, no, he'll let, not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. The idea is that the promise there is that there's a way of escape. Then that comes through the life of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, what is it? It's life in the Spirit. It's that easy. So how do we overcome the desires of the flesh, the sinful nature that we all wrestle with? Well, we must allow the Holy Spirit to help us. We must depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe it's the greatest gift that we could ever receive. God dwelling with us and filling us to overflowing, again, life in the Spirit. As I've been thinking about that idea, I've been drawn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 12 and 13 are kind of the key verses uh, that uh, have uh, that have made a difference, uh, and I want to just read it in the New Living Translation, and then we'll, we'll look at it in a little bit here. Um, Romans, I should have had this, or maybe I do, yeah, I did. Um, here it is. It says, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? That we're not obligated to drink or to smoke or to... Uh, gamble or to, uh, to worry or to complain or to compare or to overspend. We're not obligated to do any of those things, those urges. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, if you do that, it says you will live. And that is the key. We will live if we understand this and put it into practice. But we don't want to start in chapter 8 because in chapter 7, uh, the Apostle Paul wrestles with a very 
real idea, an issue that he struggled with, and it's an issue that I've struggled with, and it's an issue that you have probably struggled with as well. And you say, well, when you struggle, do you just give up? Or is, is that just the way it's going to be? It's just life. I'm just a negative person or whatever. No, uh, we don't have to do that. But there is a sense that Paul, he says in verse um, 15, he says, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. How many have ever experienced that? You're like, man, I want to do something great, but I end up doing what I hate, right? If you fast forward on the slides to verse 18, it says, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want, what I keep uh, is what I keep on doing. It's this crazy story mixed up, and we all get caught up in that at one time or another. And that's where, where we start. You say, well, how do you get victory over that? How do you overcome? Well, how do you get success? Church, it's life in the Spirit. So we must learn to depend on those Holy Spirit nudges, those urging. Galatians 5, 24 and, 20, uh, or 24 and 25 says this, For, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh, that's the sin nature, with its passions and desires. So Jesus takes it right on the cross. And it's, then it says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. I love that idea. Keep in step with with the Spirit. And when I was thinking about that and meditating on that, my mind went to the old kids game. The, how many have ever done the three-legged race, right? And you, you get hooked up with a partner and you, all of a sudden you're, the two become one and you start running and, and doing these different things. And I, I, I had kind of like um, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder when it comes to this game because um, this game has not really worked out that good for me because I'm much taller than most people and, uh, and I am also very competitive and, uh, and I've been known uh, even here at the Gateway Church with one of our elders and I figured this is a good Sunday to, to mention it because Bob and Michelle Boss are up in the UP uh, visiting their son and, uh, but Bob and I we tried to get in a three-legged race together and he just could not keep up and I crushed his foot broke his foot playing this silly kids game we were not in step that's the true story you say pastor i can't believe you did that well it's not the only time i've ever broke someone's foot uh playing a game in youth group uh, the reason they actually kicked us out recently is because uh i, I have a history with kids and games and uh, we were doing a kid, kids game with balloons you know and you kind of stomp on the and one of our other leaders a good man, Eric. I love that guy. And uh, I'm, I'm like, he is not going to win. And uh, I was trying to crush his balloon, and he you know, sl did a slip around or whatever, and I crushed his foot, broke his foot too, two down. Anyone else want to play? And, uh, and I, I, I think about that, and I think, you know, that's tragic, you know, that I broke two people's uh, feet uh, playing games. But, uh, but you know what's really, really sad is the fact that, you know, I didn't grow up dancing, and uh, it was, in my house it was kind of taboo. And um, uh, but I thought, you know, I've been married 25 years now. Some of you guys heard that the last couple weeks. And thanks, by the way, for celebrating our 25th anniversary with us. But um, I thought maybe in the next 25 years that we could learn to dance. But Jessica, she wants no part of it. She she looks at these big feet, and. Uh, and unless she's wearing steel toes, uh, she's not interested. And so that's the saddest thing to me. But, uh, but anyway, where, what are we talking about? What are we trying to learn here? Let's put that uh, three-legged race back up there. We're learning to walk with the Spirit. You've got to walk with someone. Look how much fun they're having, right? And you don't gratify the sinful nature. And the truth is, a three-legged race is a thing of beauty when it's working together. How many have ever played this? And you get in a stride, and you're like, yeah. And you get to go fast, and you, get, you, know, you win, and it's awesome, right? Well, when you're out of sync, it's not so much fun. And the same is true with the Holy Spirit. So what, again, is the key to victory, success, to overcoming? It's life in the Spirit. Will you say that with me? Life in the Spirit. So how do you do it? It's uh, found, uh, there's a recipe in Romans chapter 8, and let's start in verse number 1. Look what it says. It says, therefore, or there is therefore no condemnation for those 
who are in Christ Jesus. This is right after Paul is saying, I do the things I don't want to do, and the things I want to do, I don't do. And then he drops this on us. He says, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So when I read that, I think, you know what? When I mess up, I don't need to beat myself up. Satan would love for you just to dig yourself, just to down yourself. There's no condemnation if you're in Christ Jesus. That is worth saying again. There is no condemnation. Verse number 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free from Christ Jesus, from the law, and from sin and death. So there's power. There's life-giving spirit that comes from the power, right, uh, and from God. Verse 3 says, for, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son, this is the story of salvation, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order, verse 4, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Again, we see being full of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5, it says, For those who, are, who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. That's not the right idea. But those who live according to the Spirit, pay attention, set their minds on things of the Spirit. It's pretty clear. It's clear cut. Verse 6, For to set the mind on the flesh is death. So when you think of only sin, that's death, right? But to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Now, how many think that sounds pretty good? Right? That's what comes with the life of the Spirit, life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And then verse 9 through 11 says, For you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Boom. As believers, we have the Spirit of God in us. We are not of the flesh, but in the Spirit. And in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the, His Spirit who dwells in you. That is good news. And then the key is found in verse 12 and 13. So then, brothers and sisters, right? Uh, we are debtors, it says, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. In, in other words, there's no obligation. That's the verse I read earlier in a different translation. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Bottom line. But if by the Spirit... You put death, or you put to death the deeds of the body. You will live. And I want to see you live and be fulfilled. And living in the Spirit is how you do it. You can depend on it. And when you read that, and you understand that, and let that, those verses just kind of rest on your soul, it's like God speaks, we listen, and then when I'm tempted, you say, okay, no, no, no. My God is going to provide a way out. Amen? The truth is we don't have to do it on our own. We just need to stay in step with him. And yes, I get it. Sin can be fun for a season. And we can all get caught up in sin. And I've heard people say that sin thrills, but then it kills. Or sin fascinates, and then it assassinates, right? And, uh, and, and those are kind of fun things to say. But, but the truth is, yeah, there's, there can be a joy in sin for a while. But sin will catch up, especially unconfessed sin. And it will grow, and it will fester, and it will end up killing you. It will take out your marriage. It will take out your testimony. It will destroy your finances. It will destroy your credibility as a person. And listen, we are only as strong as we are honest. And when we are honest, we can confess our sin to the one who is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all 
unrighteousness. Remember, we've been asking, what's our greatest need? What's our greatest desire? And you might say, well, I, you know, I, I have a desire to live by the Spirit, but I'm just a terribly negative person. I can't help it. And I've met some people like that. Or you say, well, I'm just not good at loving others like you are, Pastor. Or I struggle with joy in my life, and it just is perpetual. I can't find joy. Or I have a hard time giving to others. Or I have a hard time forgiving others, even harder sometimes. Or I'm always negative. Or I'm, I'm always lacking something. And I would just say, me too. Join the club. That's why we need the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And oh, by the way, the Holy Spirit is not for us here within these four walls here at church or in your small group or at youth group. Or uh, Listen, the Holy Spirit, yes, we come to celebrate and to get filled up here, but then we go in the grace of God, right? And the Spirit of God goes with us, and I believe it's for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, for as many years, as many days as the Lord allows us to live. That's where we're to be filled, to be living with the Spirit. And the bottom line is, our own human effort, the best you can do on your best day is not enough. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. The key to victory, to overcoming, the key to success is life in the Spirit. I'm going to ask the worship team to join me as we're going to wrap this up. And I mentioned earlier just briefly, and I don't know if you caught it, that we are, you're only as strong as you are honest. we got to come to grips with the truth that we are all fallen and uh, we are all um, seriously in trouble without the Spirit. And I love the fact that uh, even here at the Gateway Church, we've been talking about it as a staff and as a board uh, in, at our last retreat a couple weeks back, that uh, one of the things that really characterize our church, and I think it's important, especially we got some guests here, is that we strive to be real and raw, and we're not all polished, and uh, we don't have it all together. And I'm the first to admit it, and I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be leading this ship, right? And the truth is, it, we're all in progress. But uh, we've had uh, a lot of different connect groups and, and uh, uh, newcomers' lunches and things, and, and people continually say, man, we just like how real you appear or how real you are. And the, the truth is, uh, we're just trying to be honest with ourselves and with you. And we don't have it together. And there's a real sense that uh, we are powerless on our own to do anything. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that, that's our testimony that, hey, hey, I was lost. I'm found. The Holy Spirit in me. I'm better with the Holy Spirit, period. And you are too. And it makes a big difference. And there's healing and you can make you whole. And, and so what we've been trying to do in this series is to say, you know what? We need a heightened awareness of the Spirit. And if that comes, when that comes, we will see God move in our lives, outside of these four walls, through City Serve, Sarah, and through other, other areas like we've never seen before. We believe we're on the cusp of advancement with the Holy Spirit, that there will be growth as we pray and fast and we ask the Holy Spirit's presence to go with us and to be with us. We believe that when you're full of what really matters, the presence of God, that it actually changes things. It's that important. And today we want to encourage you. In Ephesians 5.18, it says to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And in the Greek, Bobby can tell you, it's the present participle something or other I should have present active participle I was close what that means to all of us is that it's being filled continually not like once and done you're continually 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 filled over and over and over and every single one of us need it we need it knowledge is not enough we need to be in step the Spirit. So, I want to ask you a question. I want you to sit up straight and tall. Pay attention. 
Are you living in step with the Holy Spirit? We've had a couple weeks talking about the wind and the water and the fire. We talked about just having a desire and building our confidence in the Spirit. But today, the question is, are you living in step with the Holy Spirit? And on the surface level, you might answer the question, yes. And some of us are, some of you are living in the Spirit, and we applaud that. But there may be those that would say, yeah, I'm living in the Spirit. But I would ask you, are you boldly witnessing? Are you sharing your faith? Are you seeing signs and wonders in your life regularly, not just 10 years ago or when you first got saved? Because if you're full of the Holy Spirit and you take that with you, and you bump into somebody, you are going to pour out. You are going to affect them. It's going to make a difference. And the truth is, five to ten minutes at the end of a service may not be enough. If you answered no, you said, I would ask you, what are you doing about it? How do you get full of the Spirit? How do you get the Spirit in you? It's through salvation. And then there's a filling that comes, and it overflows. And we need that in our lives life in the Spirit. And I was, on Thursday afternoon, I was all pretty much wrapped up with the message. Maybe it was Friday afternoon. I think it was Friday. I was finished with the message, and I was almost done just kind of putting it away. I was just sitting at my kitchen table, and it was quiet. No one was around. Sipping some coffee. And a picture kind of came to me. A picture of two oxen connected to a yoke. And I want to just, you know, give you this picture here for a second. And I want you to imagine that you're one of the oxen and the Holy Spirit's the other. And you link up together. And together, you're better. That you are better with the Holy Spirit when you're yoked in, when you're, when you're in, in together. Matthew 11, 28 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Go ahead, put that picture up there just for another second. That your his yoke is easy, his burden is light. And so what we're talking about, life in the spirit, it is not difficult. It's not complicated. It's the best way to live. When you're yoked up. And you're walking with the Spirit, the Spirit of God inside of you. It makes all the difference. Some of us strive so hard, but what we need to do is thrive. And what we need to do is find Jesus, have him fill us, and then continue.